You guys have been hitting me up for a lot of questions on this 3018, so I wanted to get around and answer some of them and also do a little bit of pros and cons, or actually what I'm calling pros and challenges. So let's jump into this together. All right, welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. I want to talk about the 3018 CNC and I want to break it down into pros and challenges. I don't like the term cons and the reason in this case I don't like the word con is the big pro is price. So I paid around $123 for this unit and that's the big pro. And one of the things when I buy something like this, I really measure it towards what I pay for. So you can't expect to pay $125 and compare this to the new Tormac, which is about the same, same size as this at $3,000. Obviously, they're two greatly different machines. So that's the first big thing. And I noticed the price went up to the 130s and came back down to 127. But for the money, definitely a good buy. The other piece with this guy, assembly, was very nice, relatively easy. Uh, I would suggest that even a novice could put this together. Uh, I was really happy. Um, these are 10 millimeter rods instead of eight. I expected eight uh, for the linear rods. These, these again are 10. And this is part of the problem. As I mentioned in the unboxing, I had ordered, pre-ordered with this, thinking that these were gonna be eight millimeter rods, um, but they're 10. And then also the lead screw is a little bit different than what you would find in a 3D printer. Uh, and as I mentioned before in the unboxing, this is injection molded plastic, not 3D printed. So again, for 120 you know, some bucks, super solid machine. With that being said, let's talk about a few of the challenges. And again, I think for myself, the biggest challenge are the motor sizes. These um, are 3D, print, uh, 3D printer motors. I'm not sure what size these are, how many ounces, but they're, they're actually very weak and they can stall and I have stalled them. So what this comes down to, are they usable for this application? Yes, it's going to be at the cost of feed rate because one of the things with a 3D printer, there's really no resistance on the hot end as you're dragging it through uh, its process. But this, there is a drag on here. Obviously you have to pull it through whatever you're cutting and there is going to be lateral force against this that these motors are going to have to deal with and so you're going to have to cut shallower and slower than you would if you had a more capable motor now one of the things i plan on doing in the near future is upgrading i've got a number of these open build motors uh, you know a much more capable motor i've had them in a couple other projects and we'll upgrade the uh, X and Y. The Z is okay. The Z really doesn't take much force, just runs this up and down. More than capable. The second challenge is the spindle. Now from what I've read online, this is a 7000 RPM spindle. And this is going to be a double duty challenge with the motors because again, this is not very robust in reference to the motors. So you're going to have to run even slower for this motor. Will all this work? Absolutely, you can see it here. I've cut a number of pieces on this already. Uh, you know, more than acceptable. And again, you always have to caution this with the pro of the 123 bucks. Uh, I have seen some folks upgrade this motor. Um, you know, change this out with the 3D printed adapter to put a like a 500 watt spindle. I don't really know if I would do that. Um, why? <laughs> because that's sort of like, and, and you know, uh, I could have been guilty of this as, you know, a V8 in a Vega or a Pinto type thing. Uh, you know, it's just a lot of power for a very little frame. Um, is this capable? Yes. Uh, and, and again, I highly recommend this combination. This is some, I don't know, four millimeter softwood, has no problem with it. Uh, acrylic, no problem with it. Does a great job on PCBs, does a great job uh, on engraving. So all that is really, you know, a, a big plus on the pro column. Again, for the price, if you're looking for an entry level machine, I can't recommend this enough. And then also it's very upgradable with, again, motors and other pieces. Now, I'm gonna be doing a couple of the videos. As you can see here, I've got some modified feet. I've got uh, end stops uh, on XY 
down here. I've got the Y's, X's are over here. I've got a Z end stop here. I'll cover all that out in a later video and talk a little bit more. So I will talk about this controller too in an upcoming video which plugs into the board and allows you to use it without a PC, which really works out nice. Right now I'm using with the PC. I'm also gonna cover some pros and cons of using this versus the PC. So there are some pros and cons of that. Uh, but again, this is like 23 bucks. I have a link to it below. I'll set up regular links to all this stuff so it runs in all the videos and also for the 3018 playlist. Uh, but again, this was super cheap, well worth it. So again, I have been extremely happy with this. And actually, this has been just a lot of knockaround fun to play with. You know, if you've been following me for a while, I've got a 3040 over there. I've got another, I don't know, 1020 or some smaller one I use for over there for PCBs. I've got a bigger pro, uh, probiotics in a box that I, I really don't use. I don't do too much anymore with CNC. It's very time consuming and what I do use it for are really specific tasks. Now with the 3040, I'm going to get into doing some more stuff with that and maybe some four access stuff because I wanna build some specific things that only that machine can do. Uh, but I've been having a, really just a lot of knack around fun with this machine. It's been very easy to use. I am going to set up probing and, and like I say, I've already made some modifications to it. I'm going to laser cut some sides and some other things, but I'm going to cover that out when I get all the modifications done. Then I'm going to do a, a video on the modifications themselves. And of course, I will have all the modifications out on Thingiverse or my factory or mini factory, what have you, uh, for you guys to have for free. And I'll also have links to this down below. Again, super, super good deal. So anyways, hopefully you find it interesting. If you did, Swag Shop's up in the corner. Hit me up in the comments below if you have any questions about this. Uh, if you're thinking about getting one, I highly recommend it. If you got questions, I'm happy to try to answer them. If you have more suggestions for me of modifications, be happy to hear it. I'm also going to do an enclosure, uh, but again, that will be a separate video. So a lot of stuff planned with this. Stay tuned. Just this whole COVID thing has really been slowing me down in, in really getting videos out there because of work and just, you know, the demands of living. I'm sure you guys are facing the same thing. So anyways, we'll see you guys in the next video. Stay safe. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on